Hello there, my name is Gregory Scott and this is the last first look at Armored Commander 2. I'm making this video with the final proof of concept version which is available for download both in source code and in a compiled format for Windows at armoredcommander.com. Now for this game in the past year and a half I've gone through a couple refactors and uh, reimaginings of the core game system and now I feel like I'm at a spot where the core gameplay uh, seems quite good, it's pretty close to where I want it to be, and I'm ready to take this as sort of the, the core of the system and to start developing it and expanding it further. But before I do that, I want to give you a final first look at what Armored Commander 2 is going to be all about. So let's start a new game. Uh, the first, the only scenario that's included right now is quite a generic one. You can only play as German forces, um, but of course in the future all of this will be expanded to many different types of units and um, areas of, of the war as well. So this is the, how the game looks right now. As in previous versions, you have a view of your own tank, your crew. At present, the crew doesn't really do much. They're here just sort of as placeholders. But of course, in the future, just like Armored Commander 1, they'll play a big part in your survival during uh, various scenarios. You can see immediately what your vehicle armor is, um, what the status of your tank is. You also have uh, a menu here, a console here, that always shows you a list of possible actions. Of course, right now, because the game is still in early development, things like issuing commands, looking at your tank and crew, and conducting assaults are disabled for the moment. At the moment, pretty much all you can do is you can move around the map, and you can use uh, different weapons. This is the game map. The at symbol, of course, in the middle in good roguelike fashion, uh, represents you and your tank. Each of these hexes is a discrete location, and if you hover your mouse over it, you can see um, a description of, of what's there. If there were an enemy unit there um, as well, the information would show up in this console down here. I've added uh, recently two contextual consoles, or one contextual console up here, and an objectives console down here. This co always shows you a list of the different objectives on the map, the, the di current distance from you, and the direction. And of course, as you move your tank around, because um, your point of view is always from your own tank, and the world um, scrolls by and rotates around you, the direction of these objectives will move and be updated at the same time. Anything that has this sort of dark red hashed um, uh, texture is off the map and doesn't form part of the current game. Otherwise, you're free to move around the, the map and engage with enemy forces as you discover them as well. You can move your turret around just like that. You can rotate. But um, different from the, the earlier game, which had sort of the, the standard war game format of dividing things into phases, so there'd be a movement phase and then there'd be a shooting phase, etc. In this current version and moving forward, instead there's going to be just single actions. So your tank can do one action per turn um, unless you get lucky and you happen to move through uh, along a road or an open ground and you get a, a free action. But that's coming later, that's not implemented yet. Right now, you can do one action per turn. So for example, if I move forward, that's my one action. And in the background, all the AI units have already acted. And as you can see, the clock has ticked forward slowly. We're now at 5.02. So that was one turn. And in the future, of course, many different things can happen in a single turn. All of the units, um, the friendly units I'm going to add that will be supporting you, enemy units that are around will also act. And all, that all happens in one turn. But for now, um, Pretty much all you can do is move your one tank around and act with it. And compared to the phase system, it's actually quite responsive. So if you just want to kind of tool around the map, you can move quite quickly because it's just one key press per move. So we've moved up a little bit. We've moved along the map. We've moved toward some of our objectives. And here we've spotted a possible enemy unit. Now in the future, some of these might turn out to be nothing. There were false reports or there was nothing there in the first place. They also might turn out to be friendly units, in which case they might want to join your battle group for the rest of the scenario and give you a hand. At present, however, every time you run into a possible enemy, there is an enemy unit there. You just don't know what it is until you get close enough to spot it. And there's also an entire spotting system that um, determines if uh, enemy units can see each other and identify each other based on what they've done and what sort of terrain they're in and the range between the two as well. So let's be a little reckless. I don't know how this game is going to turn out. I might die in the first encounter. We'll see. Let's be a little reckless and let's get a little closer to this unknown unit. So they've moved into the woods. I'm going to go one more forward. As you can see, map hexes also have height. So this 
um, this level that we're on right here is 20 meters in height. This is 40 meters at height. So because this area of the map is higher, that's why I can only see one hex. I can't see beyond the crest of the hill until I actually go up the hill. So I've been spotted, but I haven't spotted the enemy, and the enemy moved away. So let's turn. Also at present, I don't have a way of becoming unspotted once you're spotted. So uh, that's coming in the future, but for now, as soon as the enemy spots you, that's it. They know, they know where you are, and vice versa as well. If you identify an enemy unit, even if they move into the part of the map that you can't see, you can still see them. Of course, that will change in the future. So let's see if we can get close enough to figure out what this thing is. And it's probably going to shoot at us eventually. So it's in there. What I'm going to do is I'm going to back out of the movement menu, go into the weapons menu. I'm going to target it. Now, because we haven't identified what it is, we can't fire the main gun at it because the main gun for now is basically all about AP. It's about armor penetrating. And unless we know what's there, we just have an idea something is there. We don't even know where to, where to fire. We're, it's very unlikely, considering that this hex is about 160 meters in width. It's unlikely that just firing wildly will hit anything. Instead, what we need to do is we need to fire off a machine gun, which we can spray over the entire area and hopefully get whatever's there to kind of poke its head out and tell us what it is. So let's fire the coax MG. Because of the terrain here, uh, there's a minus three uh, modifier. So unfortunately, we need a two or less to do any kind of an effect. So that's really not going to do anything. The terrain modifier is just too too high. Also, because we moved in the last action, the car target is concealed. The firepower of this attack um, has been reduced as well. So that's not really that helpful. Instead, let's go back to movement and let's get right up next to it. And still nothing's happened. Now, one thing you can do is if you try to move into a hex where there's an unknown enemy unit, it will automatically be identified. So let's do that. Now we know what's there. So it's an enemy rifle squad with AT rifles. Uh, so they do have anti-tank rifles. They might take a shot at us. Luckily, we have three armor on the front, which against an anti-tank rifle is pretty good uh, protection. In the meantime, though, let's try to take this unit out. Target. Uh, for now, you can fire the main gun, and I think it... I'm not sure what it'll do to infantry. Possibly something bad. Let's not do that. Let's fire the MG. Um, unfortunately, we moved last action, so we need a three or less. Missed, and we didn't maintain. There's no rate of fire with the MGs for now. Let's fire off the whole MG just in case. You never know. Missed again. All right, Rifle Squad, which doesn't have a portrait yet, fires at us. Luckily, we're a small target. Pretty easy to hit since we're out in the open, but hopefully difficult to damage. Attack hit. Yeah, luckily it needs a three or less to damage us. And a bounced off. Hooray for the armor of the Panzer 35T. So we're still targeting them. Let's fire the coax MG. Uh, we still have this bad terrain modifier, but luckily now it's four or less. Yes, we hit. Now the results of this might be that the unit is destroyed. It might be that it's pinned. It might be broken. Uh, the pinned and broken mechanics don't really do anything for the moment. So let's just try to destroy it. Very nice, that might do it. Um, another thing that is new in this version of the game is that any attacks that you do during your turn are not resolved. They're only resolved at the end of your action. So right now this rifle squad has eight um, firepower sitting on it, waiting to be resolved, and that will happen as soon as we end our action. One thing that this lets you do is it lets you fire off multiple weapons, if possible, um, during your action, and you'll have to you'll have to make uh, decide for yourself what's worth it in terms of how much fire you want to lay down to try to affect um, enemy units. So let's end our action. Resolving, has to, it's broken, now it's pinned, and it fires back at us. But luckily it's being pinned has made it more difficult to hit us. Not that we're that worried since it's just a little AT rifle. Bounced off again. So at this point, this is getting a little boring, so I'm just going to ignore these guys, and I'm just going to keep on moving. I'm going to go around them. Luckily, the armor continues to save us, even though it's our, our side armor. And eventually we'll get out of range. And hopefully they won't bother us anymore. All right, so we've left those guys behind. 
Normally, I mean, in the future, you'd be able to assault them. You could roll, you know, into their hex, and you could disrupt them that way. At present, though, they're just really annoying to try to take care of, so I've ignored them for now. However, up here, at this objective, which we need to capture, um, and this AI score that you see down in, the, in here, this is just sort of a temporary uh, debug thing for me. I'm trying to assign tactical scores to different map hexes to help the AI move around and choose good positions to move into. Here, there's two enemy units, one in the open, one in the town. We don't know what they are yet. Let's get a little closer and see what they are. Now, you can see here one of the uh, nice features about this game is that single hex, it's 160 meters in width. You know, one tank in the middle of that is not going to fill it up. There's more space than that. So what can happen is that multiple units, if they're on the same side, can stack into a hex up to a limit of like, I think like five or six or something. And the game seems to be able to hand it, handle it pretty well. They both exist in the same hex, but they are targeted and attacked and act um, separately. So this little two up here will tell you that there's actually two units in the hex. If there's just one, it won't show anything because you just see one little depiction there. So let's get a little bit closer. All right, something's firing at us. It's a 37 millimeter. Uh, it might be an AT gun, it might be a tank, but we're pretty difficult to hit because we were moving and we're a pretty small target and it moved as well. So we've spotted, I didn't spot the message, but we spotted something, some kind of a tank. And there's another squad with an AT rifle there. And they didn't hit us. So comes back to our turn. I'm going to go into weapons. I'm going to target. Now here's something nice. As you cycle through the targets, it will move your current target to the top of the stack and display it here. So now we're targeting the rifle squad. As before, these guys are kind of hard to kill, and they're actually they're in pretty good terrain here. Now we're targeting the tank. This is a seven, uh, the seven ton tank, one of, one of the, definitely one of the better of the Polish tanks. So let's hit it with 37 millimeter gun. Not great odds, both because we moved and because there's a lot of, uh, great deal of terrain in the way. But I'll give it a try anyway. No, oh, we missed, and can't do anything else. So we'll end the action. Tank goes off. ET rifle fires back. Bounced off. And there's a, there's a third unit back there as well. Okay. Let's get a little closer because uh, with all these fields in the way, it's going to be quite difficult to get a good shot on any of them. And as we move, that makes us harder to hit, luckily. One good thing about being an armored vehicle. All right. That was close. We were one, di we were one die pip off of being destroyed there. That's, that's getting annoying. Let's just roll right up and uh, machine gun them. XMG. Unfortunately, we moved last action, but in the next action, um, we'll have a slightly better to hit. Very nice. All right, we hit them with some. Let's hit them with the Hall MG as well. Missed. No effect, unfortunately. It wasn't enough firepower to make a difference. 70P fires at us. And it missed. AT rifle fires again. Hit. Shot barely bounced off again. We're getting pretty lucky here. Hit with the Hall MG. Has to take a morale test. It's pinned. Seven TP fires back. We're not doing very well. These infantry are hard to get. Okay. Let's try to change things up. Let's move over here. A lot of missed attacks. Attack missed. All right, now that we're here, take a shot at the seven TP. So this is the. I don't know if this come up. This has come up yet, but this is the armor penetration roll, which you have to do after a successful hit. Uh, the base roll required depends on the, the type of gun you're firing with. You get a bonus for close range, and then any armor that they have is taken off as well. So we need a seven or less, basically, to destroy it. All right, so that tank will be gone at the end of our action. Um, let's see, hull MG. We can fire off the hull MG. No, it requires a zero or less. That's not going to happen. So the tank is gone. 
AT rifle keeps firing back. And something, another AT rifle fires at us. It's quite big. So basically we're stuck here with two infantry squads with AT rifles just pinging off shots at us. And our MGs don't seem to be doing too much. Because we can't assault them. All right, one more try. Missed again. Missed again, all right. Forget this. This is why assaults are so handy with tanks. Let's get out of here. Let's try to capture some other objective. All right. Here's an objective. Hasn't moved yet. And what is it? TK3. All right. So this is a, basically a tankette with a machine gun on it. Um, and the machine gun can't damage us at all. So it should be an easy target. Except we, move, we moved last action, so we're kind of stuck here. Uh, there we go. Main gun. Five or less. It's tough to get because it's in the it's in the woods there. Missed again. Missed again. Come on, one more. Oh, it moved. All right. It didn't like being shot at. Movement. Yes, we captured the objective. Very nice. But we still have this tank to deal with. Okay. Uh, I'm gonna end this video here. Um, I think you've pretty much you've seen pretty much everything that uh, is this, can be seen in the game. As I said, there's a lot still to come. There's a lot of changes to be made. Assaults would be nice because these infantry are rather annoying to get rid of. What else? Um, lots of different things, uh, different crew actions that can happen. Already um, in the updated version, um, I've added the depiction, the little portrait of your tank up here to the top and made this list of, of crew members slightly smaller. So there's, there's redesigns coming, um, there's new features, and you can follow it all on my development blog at armoredcommander.com. So thanks very much for watching.